Well, that e-commerce company mm -hmm. was actually my first legit company. Okay. But in the process, I was building a second company, right? So back then, I guess- Wait a second, wait a second. This isn't the company with a, a mutual non-friend of ours? That is. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen him lately? I couldn't give a fuck about him. Same, no, not at all. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now about to witness the journey that is Life Choices Podcast. Yeah! Welcome back, everybody, to another week here on the Life Choices Podcast. This week, I am inviting Roberto. Welcome. Thank How you. How you doing? Thank you. I'm doing great. I'm so stoked about today's episode because we've known each other for eight plus years. Has it been eight years already? I mean, the trip I took where you toured me around Ecuador was in 2016. Okay. So I must have met you at least a year or two before that. I believe so. And yeah. it's 2023. Okay, wow. So it's been a minute. Time flies. Yeah, right. Yeah. And back then, uh, you had already been a businessman, and you were about the age around like 24, 25, so something like that. So eight years ago, I should have been 23. 23. And you were already a business owner here in the U.S. Correct. Right? And back then, it wasn't your first company that you had, but it was your second, I believe, that you were basically like, a, like an e-commerce online businessman. Is that kind of in a nutshell? Well, that e-commerce company mm -hmm. was actually my first legit company. Okay. But in the process, I was building a second company, right? So back then, I guess... Wait a second, wait a second. This isn't the company with a, a mutual non-friend of ours? That is. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen him lately? I couldn't give a fuck about him. Same, no, not at all. Same, same. <laughs> <laughs> so you were building the, that company at the same time you had the company I knew about. Correct. All right. Correct. So you want me to tell you about the first company? Or? Um. Well, just basically because we're now like seven years since then. And clearly from what I see, not just in front of me, but what I see on social media that you've been doing, you have created a much larger company. Correct. Because I noticed that you have um, a lot of people working with you. Mm -hmm. And I see you guys going and doing a lot of fun things. Super fun. And I see you uh, regularly in different countries. Uh -huh. And it just seems like whatever you are doing, you have kind of figured out the recipe. Well, I think it's a process. I don't think I have figured it out, but right. I'm, ha I'm having fun cooking, man. Mm. You know, I'm having fun while doing it. And for sure, that's never going to change. You know, I'm going to continue to travel yeah. every single year, different places, just like you. Right. <laughs> you know, the new is very repetitive. Okay. The new is very repetitive. So I usually go into the office. I have an office in Boca Raton. That's one of the offices that we have for Blue Energy Solar, which is a solar company that me and my brothers have and put together. Blue Energy Solar. Blue Energy Solar. Gotcha. But Blue Energy Sol Solar was actually founded by my two brothers. And down the years, I came in and then I started helping them out on the South Florida region. So all okay. the way from Daytona to Miami. So right now we have a, an office in Daytona and an office in Boca Raton as far as what I've built. Okay. Then my brothers, they also have Jacksonville, they have St. Augustine, they have Bradenton, they have Cape Coral, and my older sister is controlling the New Jersey and New York market as well. Damn, the whole family. Yeah, so around 10 a.m. I start interviewing people. You know, I have about one to three people every single day that want to work for us. And I just interview them. Sometimes I give them the job. Sometimes I don't. Then after that, I go into performance meetings with all of my team. I have about 31 people on their, on my team right now. Guess who's working for us? Oh, fuck. Who? Mark. Bebop. Bebop. Get the fuck out of here. He's been in the company for two years. Really? Very, very successful. No doubt. Yeah, very I'm successful. trying to get him on here, but he won't come. Yeah. Yeah. You know him. He's private a private guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm putting mm -hmm. my glasses on here because I want to read something off. Um, you're such an awesome human being because uh, once we agreed uh, to have you come on the show today, you, you already, before even getting here to record, you had already posted a little thing. This is probably why I have a couple of new uh, followers today is because you put this post up. Wow. Um, yeah, it's hilarious what happens. So you have this here, and it's a quote. It says, what defines us isn't the result of one monumental choice but the collective impact of all our choices. And dude, like when I read that, I was like, 
that's pretty fucking on point right now. Absolutely. So is that your quote? Is that like a quote of a business person? Yeah, like, I was you? actually thinking about different quotes. I was actually thinking about different things to say in the podcast. Yeah. And I actually wrote a lot of things down. Nice. You know, okay. I, I could maybe share some of them. Please, because like that quote, when, when I read that this morning, like it, it filled my cup up, not going to lie. I, like I read that and I'm like, fuck dude, that guy's like, he's on point as to like what we're kind of doing here and trying to give the message, which is, it's, it's not about, you know, just one choice, but it's about a collective of all, all the day's hard works that you do. Absolutely. So let's elaborate on, on where your mind was when you wrote that. Okay. Well, you had invited me to the podcast and I thought, well, we have to talk about life choices, right? And what actually brings us to where we are right now. And there's not one thing that I can tell you, hey, this is exactly what I did. And then I am the person who I am. Right. Absolutely not. You know, it's definitely a cumulative of different choices that we make through our entire life or in our present moment that brings us to whoever we are. Mm -hmm. And not only that, just analyzing the choices that you make and if it's a bad choice, don't judge yourself, but instead look into that choice, look into the result and now say, wow, this is what I did. This was the outcome. Now do it again. But now you have a clear view of what you did that you did wrong in your head, but now you can do it better. Just one step better. Learning from your mistakes. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I like that because it's like, I do this often. I visualize unfortunately the whole day sometimes and i think to myself when i've done or said something or even eaten something like breaking down to something small is like dude why'd you do that like you know that wasn't good for you or mm -hmm. or that result or your reaction to that fuck i wish i didn't say that to that person but then you can take that choice that you did you know like almost like soak in it and then the next time you're gonna go do something you're sort of like uh, no i don't want the same result so let's do a different action right and not only that Exactly what you're saying, you know, the choice that you make has its impacts, you mm. know, it has its results. Now, it comes to what exactly you're going to do about it as far as like, for example, if I said something that upset you, am I just going to, you know, ghost you, not talk to you anymore? Or what exactly am I going to do that will bring you into the maturity level of how you can progress in your life? Mm -hmm. You know? So basically, in other words, every action has its reaction. Correct. Right? Yeah. And the reaction of it, you have to own it. Mm -hmm. You have to own it. And what you do about it is how mature you can actually be to move forward to the next action or choice that you're going to do. So I say this, we don't really have control over our emotions. We have control over our reaction to our emotions. Mm -hmm. And what you're saying I agree with is like, if someone says something for example, I got, I, like we did off screen, we were talking about stuff. You're giving me advice on how to get this to a better or higher level for what I want. Mm -hmm. I had talked to a couple other people this week that gave me also some really good constructive criticism. Now, most people would, would have taken what they heard as offensive or personal and been upset and not talked to that person again. Being a person who wants to grow, I'm able to take that information in a mature way, like you're saying, and realize that, okay, let's absorb this. Okay, he said this. Okay, maybe he's right. Let me look into it. Let me look back at old podcasts. Okay, I see what he's saying. Okay, let me try on the next podcast to implement that suggestion, and let's watch to see what happens. And that's a choice. That's 100% a choice right. for myself to become better at what I desire to do. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that you say that it is definitely upon the individuals or the recipients way of dealing with the information is how they're going to make their their next choice right imagine your choice being like ripples of water mm -hmm. imagine you being the rock and you throw a rock inside of a pool at first you're not going to see any results but all the ripples of water once they hit that wall of life and that comes back to you that's when you're actually going to see the results and it's also how little or big your choice is will give you the same the magnitude of what it's going to come back if i grab a tiny little rock and i throw it into a pool it might not even come back to me whereas if i grab a boulder and i throw it into the into the pool it might even break the pool you know mm -hmm. and then everything is going to come back but it takes time it takes time exactly so i have to imagine because we talked for about an hour off screen before we started filming you own a company obviously with your brothers um and you have a, a group of people that are working with you, under you, what have you. Uh, you have daily, weekly meetings with the whole group, individuals. I get a sense that you're kind of like the motivator. 
Yeah, in a way, I'm a motivator. I do have daily meetings with them. And sorry to interrupt, and you clearly have the credibility of sales that are good because you have these other businesses that you have developed that, like you said, you're, you don't even have to physically do anything anymore. Those companies just keep creating revenue for you because you have the right people in the right place to continue on doing what you started back in the day. Correct. So any of your new employees that are like working with you, that are wanting to work with you, they know that you already are successful. Correct. Yeah, I do have success in the e-commerce uh, market in that industry. But in solar, I started from nothing. Right. You know, I had to learn how to sell solar. Mm. And then within three months, I was pretty good. You know, and then fast forward a year, I sold about 135 systems. I was actually the number one seller in the company. So that's where people can say, okay, he has a proven success. I should listen to what he what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Last year, I did $8 million in revenue alone. Boom. Yeah. Just you. Just me. Just you, not Just, the company. Not the company. One individual. The company, we did $87 million. $87, in $87 million in revenue. Mm -hmm. Fucking congratulations, dude. Right, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, uh, my brothers are doing a fantastic job, and we're growing so fast. You have yeah. no, you have no clue, man. No, I, I don't so I have fast. zero clue. But the fact that you just said that you generated $87 million, that's fucking unbelievable. Yeah. And that was last year, year to date. We're more than that. More than that already yeah. year to date. Yeah, yeah. Fucking mm -hmm. wow, dude. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We have about 120 people working in the company right now. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's full on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I can't believe this. Here I am sitting with you. I, I'm, I'm literally getting flashbacks of our trip to Ecuador. <laughs> In two weeks, we, we ran around your country and you showed me so much. Yeah. And you were 24-ish uh -huh. back then. And here you are like a full on successful business individual. Thank killing you. it. And I love it because I, like, when I see you flying around at different places, I'm like, motherfuckers getting his. Dude, I, I recently took a little trip to Barcelona and oh. to Amsterdam. <gasps> My friend, about two months ago, he's like, my birthday is coming up. I'm going to be in Europe. And I, you know, we were having some beers. So I was like, yeah, dude, I want to go to Europe. Yeah. So then I took a three-day trip to, to Europe. Three-day trip? I know. What? I know. Not the smartest decision. <laughs> it was actually five days, but two days flying. Okay, and yeah. And then three yeah. days. Two days in Barcelona, one day in Amsterdam. Super fun. No super, doubt. Super, Been super to fun. to both places. Love them both. But yeah, you know, completely worth it. Um, I'm going to continue to do that. Um, yeah. My next trip is in Vermont at the end of the the end of the month okay um after that new year's so i don't know maybe costa rica maybe bali do bali if you haven't been yeah i fucking well, love yeah. it dude i lived in bali for four oh, months oh that's right yeah yeah, 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 yeah yeah i fucking love that place i get yeah. bali belly every time i go though oh. do you ever get that no, no no for anyone out there that doesn't know what bali belly is it's basically like you get like a stomach bug and you basically need to shit constantly. And yeah. I couldn't like, anytime I've gone, I have to kind of stay within mm -hmm. my, uh, my Airbnb or they call it a stay. Um, but it only lasts like a couple of days and then I'm good. Yeah. But uh, a lot of people get it. Like when you, when you go Google Bali trips, you'll Google Bali belly. Yeah. And um, also everything gets infected there. You know, yeah. you most likely are going to fall from your scooter or yeah. you're going to get into a <laughs> car accident. A monkey's going to grab your food or your water. Oh my God. They're not going to bite you. Yeah. But they might steal your cell phone. That's or your right. Sunglasses. Because you actually were telling me about all the different things. That's right. Because when I was in Ecuador with you, you were telling me about the places in Bali. And I remember you've, you've gone with like some friends. You went to Thailand as well, right? Yeah. I've been to Thailand three yeah, times. Because you went and like yeah. went to Phuket, I think, and you guys had like some kind of wicked ass villa or something oh like that. God, for super amazing. Cheap. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I think we were paying $400 a night. Wait, maybe even there's a bunch of you. Yeah, yeah. It was like eight of us. Yeah. It was eight of us. But I, we had an infinity pool overlooking the, Fu the Phuket Patong area. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm going to want to know that place because I might be going back to Bali in I'll May. I started back to Thailand in May for a friend's 40th birthday. Okay. And, uh, it's a blast. Yeah, dude. I've been three times already. Uh -huh. I fucking love that goddamn yeah. place. It's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So so owning these businesses and, and being successful, like more than successful, um, you're able to do these traveling. You're able to do a three-day trip to Barcelona and, and uh, Amsterdam just because your friend was like, hey, my birthday, let's go. Mm -hmm. um, that must make you feel fucking amazing. Yeah, you know, I still pray yeah. when I eat. I still pray in the plane. I like to say, you know, thank you, God, for all the blessings that you're giving me. Thank you for giving me the direction that, I, that you've given me. Thank you for putting me in the position that I am. You know, it's been amazing. It's been a lot of hard work. Please help everybody in the world that cannot enjoy this and can hopefully maybe, you know, get to this place. So I always look for peace and I always, you know, stay grateful for what I have. 
And that makes me feel good. You know? Oh, absolutely. That's a huge thing here on, on our podcast. Uh, a good friend of mine, Pete, uh, he goes by Pete Casso. He's actually my new <laughs> tattoo artist. Uh, okay. he, he did my legs. He's awesome. And we talk about this all the time about gratitude and praying and whatnot, because we're both very secure and very comfortable with, with our own beliefs. Mm-hmm. Um, and when someone new sits down in the chair and they bring that up without me ever saying it, I'm just like, bet, like I pray every morning and every night I give gratitude lists every day. Mm-hmm. And, and again, not just for what I have, but like for anyone around me, that's part of my, my family and my extended circle, I guess you could say. And just being grateful of wherever you are now and knowing that the hard work that you're putting in is being recognized. Cause that's why you're getting the blessings. Right. That, that's the way I look at it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, so you got the big, the, the big business with the, with the family mm-hmm. and, uh, your, your mom here. So my mom recently bought her second home. <laughs> okay. In, good for mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In St. Augustine, oh, which wow. is where my older brother lives. And you know, there's three grandchildren over there. So that's why. We oh, she's re- loving it. Yeah. We retired her and now yeah. she's living over there. She's gets whatever she wants, whenever she wants, yeah. you know, we're spoiling her because she can't get spoiled now yeah she took care of you guys yeah Yeah. absolutely well a little backstory actually uh roberto because you're from guayaquil correct i said that correctly right all right yeah Yeah. so uh born in in ecuador Mm -hmm. right grew up there i'd I'd gone to a couple of the homes uh that that you then had at that time Mm -hmm. uh and let's talk a bit about that because you come from a country that isn't as wealthy as others. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I remember like, I remember you, you touring me around your home country Mm -hmm. and going through the little towns where I saw things that I had never seen before. And I would call my parents up and, and when they said, Hey, how you doing? I'd just be like, thank you. And they're like, what? I said, I just wanted to call to say, thank you. They're like, I don't get it. I was like, I'm seeing shit that I never had to deal with in my entire life growing up because you both decided to grow up in Canada. Mm-hmm. Well, you didn't decide to. Your your parents brought you to Canada. I was born in your, your family, and I got to see this like two income suburban household of like, I don't want to say luxury, but I didn't go without. You know, mm-hmm. and here I am traveling in a country where there's a lot of people that are going without. Yeah, and I was I was just like wow. So like, you have been a determined man, even when you were a boy. Absolutely, that's the way I look at it. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that when we were in uh, Montanito. Montanita. Montanita. Mm -hmm. I noticed that when we were there, and I think I asked you about this, we were there and I saw like a lot of young boys, I want to say under the age of 10, doing stuff that like I would think like a 19 year old would do Mm -hmm. in my home country. And you expressed to me back then like, yeah, that's just how it is here. Like you got to grow up fucking fast. Exactly. So let's talk about that for a bit because here you are sitting in front of me, well-dressed, accomplished, successful man coming from a place that you might've had not as many... It's the word I'm looking for. You didn't have as much help, let's say, to get you to where you are and look at where you are right now. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, in Ecuador, it's not like the United States where if you don't have money, all you have to do is go wash a car, go get a job, and then you get money. There's no jobs. There are no jobs. What you got to do is, you know, fish and sell that fish or buy some vegetables in the market and go to the street and sell that. Or, you know, work yourself into a network where you can finally get a job. And when you finally get a job, all you get paid is $300 a month. $800 a month if you're an executive. $1,000 a month, that's a great salary. And we use the U.S. dollar. Right. So when you live under those conditions, you definitely have to work hard and you definitely have to mature so you don't end up in those situations i believe i must have been seven years old and i was reading actually the book that's right behind you rich dad poor dad yeah and there's there's a section that (laughs) sorry at seven yeah yeah yeah. dude i'm 45 reading it (laughs) (laughs) so so my dad my dad uh never really spoiled us even though he has the means to spoil us He never did because a spoiled kid will never work hard for something, right? He gave us a roof over our head. He gave us a private education. He gave us um, food, right? But I never had money to go buy a t-shirt. I never had money to go buy myself a soccer ball. Hell no, I had to work for it. So at seven years old, I remember my dad gave me rich dad, poor dad, because he didn't really believe in kids' books. He believed in business, you know, and and, uh, development books. So then I started reading it, and every single day I had to tell him, hey, what did I read the day before? 
And I remember I got to the part where he has to work for free, right? Or he works for 25 cents, I believe it is in the book. So then my dad's like, okay, now you're going to come work for me. He trained for, f- for free. No, for 10 cents an hour. Oh, boom. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. For free. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, he taught me what to do. I worked for him for about a month and a half. But what did that teach me is that you have to work hard for money. So the first things that I did was in Ecuador, as you saw at the beach, they sell food and ice cream. They sell things on the beach, right? So then I went to the beach. Nobody was selling anything. So then I bought a bunch of ice creams and then I upsold it. You know? <laughs> Here. Yeah, yeah. At the beach. In Jupiter, Florida. Fucking love it. Right. <laughs> I, was, I was 13 years old. Hustling. Yeah, yeah. I was, then um, the city caught up about a week later and they say you cannot be doing this in the beach so i was like why not you know and also i didn't know english i could barely Mm. speak english then fast forward i said okay what else can i do to make money and i thought well i speak spanish i'm gonna go two minutes before the bill rings into spanish class outside and hand out a paper and say hey i can make your spanish homework for ten dollars boom right there that was a boom that was the first Mm. boom right so then I started making some money, you know, $100 here and there until I got caught. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I had my clients. It lasted about two months, surprisingly. Okay. Then, then I got caught and then I stopped that. But then I was giving all that money to my mom and to my brother. Um, even though I was making money, I would not spend a single dollar, even for food. I would starve myself through mm. high school so I can give that money back to, to my family, right? That needed it the most to, you know, put... Food in, the, in, in my belly, I guess. Yeah. Um, fast forward, when I was 15 years old, he calls me and he said, hey, I need to buy garage door openers. And please do some research. Find me a good price. And I said, fantastic. You know, I was kind of a nerd in mm. school. In Ecuador, I was a huge troublemaker. But once I moved to the United States, I had to take the father figure. So I became a nerd. You know, I just full on school, full on business. So then I... Went onto different websites. I put an Excel sheet together. I did a competitive analysis on at a garage door opener that he needed. And how old were you? Fifteen. Fifteen. And you did a competitive analysis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue. And I found out that on eBay, the garage door opener that he needed was selling for one hundred and eighty nine dollars. And I found it on Sears at one hundred and eleven dollars by opening a company. So then I f- told Sears, hey, I do have a company when I didn't have one. Mm. But I know my dad has one in Ecuador and they gave me a commercial account. And then I, I found that product for $111. I gave my dad that information. He made the purchase and then I saw the opportunity. So that's when I took the choice and I said, hey, I'm going to go ahead and sell this one online on eBay. And then I put it for $184. In matters of two hours, I sold 10, and that was sell out. I sold out mm-hmm. because you can know when you first start an eBay account, you can only sell up to $1,000 or 10 items. Okay. I sold out super quick. And I was like, holy shit, what the fuck do I do? Yeah. You know, I don't have the items. There's a demand for it. Right. So then I called Sears and I said, hey, yeah, so I want to kind of like test it out and send it to different locations. Would you guys be able to ship it to different locations? He goes, kid, send us the money. We'll send it wherever you want. <laughs> I said, done deal, Papa. And just like that, I started um, making money. And 15, again, 15 years old. Yeah. And, and you already, you already been doing hustling in areas in which you were told to stop. Right. Right. And it eventually just kept pushing you sort of like what we were saying earlier, where you're like, you know, you have those choices that you can make. And then when you get a result, you have to learn, okay, do I want the same result or do I want something else? Well, you don't want the same result. You don't want to keep getting in trouble. Right. You want to just keep making money. Right. So you made new choices and now, boom, you found yourself in a situation where you can actually make good money legally without getting in trouble. You just got to keep getting people to raise your fucking limits. And little by little, I started growing. I went from one product to three products to 12 products. From there, I noticed that I needed to expand. So and I hired my best friend in Ecuador and he was working for me for, I believe, $200 a month. <laughs> nothing, nothing. And he was able to get me from 12 products to around 300 products in about a month. And then after 300 products, I know I took a leap to 1,200 products, 
with the same guy. But then he hated it because it's a lot of repetitive work. I gave him a raise. I ended up paying him $500. And yeah, so once I got to 1,200 products, I said, you know, I was making plenty of money. From there, went into systems, to apps. That's when I um, met. Yeah, he's not going to mention his fucking yeah, name. Yeah, that, that <laughs> fucking narcissistic. <laughs> oh, my Asshole. God. So you've had such a you've had such an interesting uh, life, starting at a young age, at like the age of seven, working for your dad for ten cents, reading Rich Dad Poor Dad at such a young age. Uh, totally makes sense more to me now why at the age I met you at twenty four that you were already what I considered back then an established business person because you had that e commerce company which you had, however many products uh, on the list that. Uh, at that time, our mutual friend, your ex, uh, was working with you as well because when you guys, uh, when she left the yacht that I was working on with her, you guys then went for travel for a while mm -hmm. and she was basically just working for you and, you know, not really getting paid, but you were taking care of everything, right? right? Um, and it's so very interesting, the amount of companies, the amount of different jobs that you were doing whether it was legal or not, who gives a fuck? You were working, right? right? You were trying to make money for the household, not even for you. You were just trying to provide for your mother and your and your siblings. Mm -hmm. And here you are, like, not even 20 years of age, and you're already, I would say, a business owner of multiple companies, whether they lasted or not, who cares, um, doing way more than most people that I know today that are closer in my age, whether they're five or five years younger or older have only ever maybe had like one company or like have had the same job like forever, you know, and here you are at not even 20 years of age. You're, you're already like capitalizing on skills that you're learning that you have by doing the repetition. Right. Like we talked off screen about the monotonous stuff that we have to do or the, all that hard work that nobody sees mm -hmm. to get you to where you are. Like today I came out of my house walked across the street, saw you, came out in this lovely blue suit. You, you came out of a, a, I'm not going to say what type, but you came out of a very nice vehicle, you know, and this just like, this presents a visibility of success, right? Of what society says success is. Like you've, you've obviously gotten yourself to a happy place in life because you can do what you want to do when you want to do it, mm -hmm. which to me, that's pure freedom. Not having to work necessarily for other people and have the funds to be able to say yes to a friend about going to Europe for three days. Not many people can do that. So you're still very young because you are now 31. 31. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was 31, it was fucking a while ago. Um, and I was nowhere near where you're at when I was at 31. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's unbelievable to see you like this right now, and it and it just it, it fills me up inside with a level of respect because you. you've done all the hard work behind the scenes, and you still do all the hard work behind the scenes, which most people aren't willing to do. Right? How how did you get yourself? How did you? Because it seems like your mindset's been there from day one, like as a young child through your father. You're still in that mindset of doing all the hard work. You're enjoying life. You're traveling. You're seeing good things. You're promoting good work within your employees because you told me about your incentive, incentives with them in order to get good work out of them. How do you get through all that hard work, the shit that like people just don't want to do or people just don't realize they need to do in order to get themselves there? I like it. Yeah. I like it. I like doing it. Then when it's stressful, I just book a trip to Costa Rica. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just go ahead and take off and go to Dubai and Switzerland. It was planned to be 15 days. I ended up taking eight months off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, 15 days becomes eight months. Okay. Yes. Then I went to California. Unfortunately, every that I, everything that I had bought mm. gifts and everything for myself got stolen in the united states in la that's hilarious going to see joe rogan get out of here yeah where'd you see him at the comedy club in, okay in la you know he has i think he's now think opened up his own somewhere. his own club in houston i think oh cool i think mm -hmm. don't quote me on that but he was in the process of building i think what's like the biggest comedy club possible mm -hmm. um out there that's so funny that you say that you did all that traveling and and you got your shit stolen in the States, which, um, do you know who Henry Rollins is? 
Uh, maybe he's feisty at picture. Okay, he's an epic dude from like I mean he was in a he was in a punk band I think in the eighties, right? Okay. But he's a super smart motherfucker, mm-hmm. and I don't know the name of the show, but he was actually on. I think he was on Joe Rogan's show and he was talking about like, he does this thing now where he just like closes his eyes or something and just points to a place and he goes. And it's like the most random places. Like he said, he went to Mongolia and like, he's been everywhere, right? Like this dude was not just um, uh, in a punk band. He's been a very super, he's a very political, very smart, very driven individual. And obviously through his fame and his money, he's been able to create a lot more successes but this thing that he's doing now, which is this whole travel thing where he gets really in depth into the country that he's in to find out like the politicalness of it. And like, he meets like the heads of rebellion parties and whatnot. That's dangerous. Right? No, like straight up, he's expressing that how, how dangerous this would be. And he says out of all the fucking countries he's been in the most dangerous country, United States. Yeah. The only place that he almost got killed twice. Dude, I mean, the Asian culture, when you go there, they're so welcoming. They're so polite. I try to tell people that all the time. Oh, my God. It's so nice. Everybody's super friendly. But going back into when I first moved here, it was such a culture shock. When I first moved here, my first day, I was 13 years old, and this girl comes up to me, and she's like, are you a virgin? (laughs) I wasn't even thinking about that. What? Just out of the blue, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then another guy came up and he's like, oh, dude, don't listen to her. She's a slut. If you call somebody a slut in Ecuador, forget about it. Mm. She's going to hit you. Her brother's going to hit you. You already said it. Her enough. father's <laughs> going to hit you. <laughs> as soon as you said forget about it, I know what that meant. <laughs> right. So, so anyways, I came into that culture shock. Fast forward, when I graduated high school and I had my business, right, I had to make a strong decision and a choice which was, do I pursue the life of the Americans where I go out with my friends to a university and have fun, get that degree, or do I get a degree at home and build my business? You know, as a kid, and all my friends are like, dude, come, all the boys are going to be there. Like, it's going to be so much fun. I wanted it, but I knew that I had to do the business and I had to take care of family and my future way beyond my friends and i'm not gonna lie my personal opinion you did the best choice possible because um michael b jordan Mm -hmm. um he says this uh what do he say i'm not gonna get the quote right but he talks about how making the decision to go out and party in your 20s is the wrong decision and to work during those 10 years so that you can you're not missing anything you know, you go to a bar once and you see what that's about. That's what it's going to be about every time you go. But if you put your head down and work in your 20s, which is the time in which you're able to absorb more, the time in which you're able to work off of less sleep, the ability to bounce back easier, you're going to be able to create so much more for yourself if you put your head down and work so that in your 30s, you're you're, you're going to have so much more fun in a way better easier way than just those 10 years of partying in in college yeah you're ahead of the game yeah the same thing that elon musk says for you know for example if somebody's working 40 hours a week do 160 exactly doing four more well it's like kobe the mama mentality right Mm -hmm. you you go practice once or two more times in a day than the rest of the team does you know and you do that every day for months and years they're never going to catch up to you because right. they're already that far behind you so mm-hmm. you're 31 we've talked about how you have so many businesses that you've uh, you've had and you're still doing and you're making you know a really good living but not only that you're living yeah. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and and that's the difference that people don't understand is like sure yeah you're going to work you know go to college work 40 hours a week white picket fence house 1.2 2.1 kids whatever the fuck it is but are you living You've worked your ass off in your teens and your twenties and you haven't like, you're just, you haven't even chipped away yet at the fun and you're having so much fun and, and your life is going to be so unbelievably adventurous at the point in which, for example, 45, I've lived, I have seen a lot of the world. I'm very grateful. If it was taken away from me tomorrow, I'd be okay with it because I've seen some shit. Most people my age at 45 are not even close to where you're at at 31. And that's like you've you've put in the hard fucking work in your 20s so that your 40s, you're not going to be worrying about, oh, shit, do I have money to take care of my mom? Oh, shit, do I have money to pay my mortgage? You're not going to be worrying about any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. 
yeah man it's a, life is about a balance you yeah. know like the tattoo that you have in one of your fingers you know one of them <laughs> <laughs> balance man yeah you know you cannot just work yourself to the ground and not live life you know you got to have a balance like you said earlier you know success it can be seen as the cars that you drive how much money you have in your bank account what you're purchasing if you're flying in private jet or first class or whatever you're doing right but success is way beyond that that's just one of the aspects you know success can be how successful are you with your health you know, how successful are you with the relationship with, within your family, with your girlfriend, fiance, wife, right? And it's just many different aspects. So it's definitely a balance. And it's hard for sure to keep a balance, mm. but you got to give it your all. The way I look at balance, it's so funny you bring this up. I'm, I'm in a zone of unbalanced balance, I guess you could say, because for me, you, you know what I do for a living on the boats and, and you've, you've been aware of it cause you've been around it and mm -hmm. you know, you be Bob, your ex, everyone else that you've associated with in the younger days, 16 to 18 hour days on my feet to make money, to pay for my mom's bills and to pay for what I'm doing here. Uh, and then spending every other minute that I have either working on, uh, building a business or the other things that I believe are important to my success, which is quality time with those people that I'm closest with proper time at the gym, physical health, all of those aspects. But I don't have a balance when people look like, yeah, but you go out and have fun. It's like, well, I'm having fun because I'm getting to see the results of my hard work, but I had so much fun before because I was that person in my 20s. Like I didn't go to fucking university right away. I went to college out of high school, dropped out, moved in with my brothers in a different city than my parents lived, partied my ass off. I mean, drugs, drinking, sex. I wasn't paying attention to anything else. And I did that for my whole fucking twenties. Like I didn't stop. And now I feel like, okay, well I got to balance that out. So people look at me now and they're like, dude, but don't you go and do anything? Like why you don't go out anymore? It's like, yeah, because I did all that already. So I got to make that, I got to make up for all that and put all my effort into my work. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at my balance right now. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Yeah. But I mean, the way that I see it and with what you're explaining it is you still have to have that balance. Mm. You know, you still, I'm sure you still go out with the, with the guys. Once every beers. like three months, dude. But that's part of the balance, yeah. man. Yeah. When you I know, feel it's necessary. Same here. I don't go out, you know, but when I go out with the guys, yeah, I drink some beers and that's part of the balance. You yeah. Know? It's, we're older now. We don't hey. have to go in. And party. Isn't that if weird? We just, yeah. Yeah. If we just do it one time, we're good for the month. Yeah. You know? I mean, I literally have said this before on the show where um, people might see me like maybe a Friday and a Saturday night together, or maybe they'll see me Saturday and then the following Saturday and then ghost for three to five months. Part Partly because, you know, I might be out of the country, you know, working. Other part, I'm just, I'm just busy. But here's the thing too. You're saying that you have that balance. But the mm. day that you live the United States or you go to a different, you know, state or city or country, there goes the other side of the balance. Right. You're going to party your ass off. You're going to have a lot of fun over there. You're going to have a lot of adventures. So adventures maybe, but like, not like, I mean, I don't, the whole party aspect is like kind of not gone for good. Cause like you said, I definitely will still with my close friends. But when I, when I go to a different country or a different city or whatever it is, or if I go home for a weekend, like go visit my family for a weekend, um, I look at fun differently, you know, spending time with my nieces and nephews. Like I went home for my mom's 75th birthday in August and I was there for a few days and I got to spend proper quality time with my nieces and nephews. That's nice. And for me, that was like, dude, that was way better than going out drinking for like four yeah. minutes and feeling like shit the next day. Dude, something about the nieces and nephews. Yeah. Oh my God. I love. You so don't much. have any kids yet, do you? I don't have kids, but I have okay. 10 nieces and nephews. Damn. So I yeah. love it. I love yeah. them so much. I'm Same a, thing, man. Yeah. I love seeing them. And like, I, I feel like a shithead because in the 16 years, cause the eldest, my eldest, who's my godson, Ari, uh, I think he's like, yeah, he's starting to drive. So he's gotta be around 16. He's only seen me like maybe like seven times. You know, and it's because what I do for a living, like I'm constantly traveling mm -hmm. and I know that's a bullshit excuse, but it's like all of my nieces and nephews, I've missed out on all of them growing up, except for the youngest. Cause he's only like six or seven. 
you know, and uh, kind of doesn't, but does know me, but not really. You got to bring him to the podcast. Dude, Probably. like, I mean, so so there's some stuff in the mix right now. Okay. Uh, this is October that we're filming. This podcast is probably going to be up in sometime in December, maybe. And uh, this is season two. So season three, I have huge things in the mix. Actually, I'm so stoked about it. Um, we're going to be taking the Life Choices podcast to a studio. I'm, okay, I'm one of my best mates who lives here on the compound. Uh, Brian Hernandez has uh, just pro- procured uh, a bit building that's going to have a bunch of different uh, offices in it. And I'm lucky enough to be able to rent one of those spaces from him at like an unbelievably wonderful price. I'm not going to get into too much detail. The whole point is the Life Choices podcast is going to move into an area that I'm going to have to build out into an actual studio. And this can be so fucking cool. And then when my family comes into town, thousand percent, like any of the nieces and nephews that, you know, want to have a conversation or willing to be on TV, I'd love to have them. I actually just had a thought this morning, mom, you're going to have to come on the podcast. Um, I'm going to take my mom probably and get her like a spa day, you know, Good. get her hair done and her nails done. And then just sit down and have a proper mom and dad talk, mom and son talk on the podcast. Quality time. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think mom, mom, I hope you're going to like that because it's happening. Oh yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's like a lot of good things happening. And it's interesting, like, because like when it comes to like the people in your life that you can count on, we talked about this earlier off screen. When you put in the hard work and the effort, it's amazing who shows up for you and willing to do things either for free or in some other way to help you and that's where i'm at right now i'm noticing that like absolutely you know when you are vibrating this energy of growth right and you're putting in the hard work the people that see it and the people that actually care for you they're going to join that area and they're going to pull you too you know they're going to make you grow a little bit more i love how you just brought that up i love i love doing this podcast and i've and like people will remember me saying this Almost every time I have a guest on, they bring something up without me saying a fucking word about something that the guest previous to them had said. You, you mentioned vibration and energy there. It's a big thing. Big, big thing. Huge. And uh, most people aren't willing to look. Most people aren't willing to admit that it's there, even though it's a scientifically proven fact. Mm-hmm. How do you think... Uh, whether you live your life this way or it's affected you, how do you, how do you feel about the vibration or the energy that you're giving off or vibration level that you're at most days? I'm on the happy neutral side. Happy neutral. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's pretty interesting that you asked me that question because the only things that are going to get me to the negative side, it's death and sickness. Okay. You know, I have had family members pass away. I've had many family members also be very, very sick. And those are things that, you know, you should care and you should worry about. But if I get into a little car accident, you know, if I have to spend thousands of dollars fixing the car, if uh, the business is not going well, it could be stress, but that should not negatively impact your life. You should still see it on like a positive side. You know, you're still healthy you still have your life. That's just a tangible thing that can get fixed. Or even with emotions, you know, um, anybody can feel down for X, Y, Z, right? But they're still healthy and they're still alive. They can just work through those emotions and feel those emotions, let those emotions come in, you know, spend time with themselves and with friends and people that care for, and then just heal and grow out of that. And eventually you're going to be on the other side, right? But yeah, for me, I'm definitely on a very happy neutral stage because I've noticed when I'm, for example, at a very low stage, perhaps, you know, a family member is sick or has passed away, everything gets foggy, you know, and it's hard to come out. When you are super excited, you know, it's like a high, but then once that wears off, it's going to be hard for you to get to that high again. And if you're too high all of the times, it's not going to be the same next time that you do something that you're accomplished and you feel proud of, you know? So 
happy neutral. Happy neutral is where you're yeah. at. I like that. It's mm-hmm. a very interesting definition of, of where you're at on the vibration slash energy level. Um, I agree with you with the, the downs, you know, with like the family members and whatnot. And unfortunately it can affect you in a way that, you know, maybe your productivity is not at its highest because you are kind of more focused on the loved one. What I love about what you said though, is I don't care about stuff. Okay. Because you're right. It's just a thing like, Oh fuck. I got in a car accident. It's going to cost 1500 bucks. Okay. That sucks. It does, but I can still walk. Right. I still have the ability to breathe. I woke up today. These are all fucking amazing things that I still have. So why sweat what they call the little things? I grew up in a household where, well, we'd get in trouble for shit like that. You know, didn't understand it back then because we weren't paying for the couch, the car. At the end of the day, my, my parents always said, what we care about most is that you're okay. And some people don't like that, which is unfortunate because all this shit that we have... We don't take with us at the end anyways. Mm -hmm. What we do have is our life, how we physically live and mentally live. And if you have that ability to be okay with those, then all this shit, if it breaks, if it spills, red wine on the couch, all right, it sucks. It can be fixed. Right. Yeah. Just laugh about it. Learn from it. Absolutely. You know, and if you're going to give yourself and judge yourself, then just make it a little, little quick thing. Yeah. Don't let it ruin your day. Your time is so valuable. And, and your time is so precious to, time. to be ruined, you know, yeah. an entire day. We, we tend to talk about this is uh, time. I'm not, I'm not a fan of the essence of time because we've been brought up in a way that we have to be at a certain place at a certain time. You got to can't be late for school, can't do this, whatever. But the only thing you can't replace in life is time. Mm-hmm. And that's why we have to make the most of it. And when I say you're living, not only are you successful, but you're also living, is you're enjoying the time that you have right now with the people that you have in your life. You've taken care of your mother. You've retired your mother to St. Augustine. She must love that. You have time to go see your family when you want to. You have time to hang out with your friends when you want to. And you take care of your successes when they need to be taken care of. So you have a great understanding of how important time is. Absolutely. It's a choice. You know, you got to make a decision of what you're going to spend your time on. You know, it's super broad, but -hmm. at the same time, like for example, going back to rich dad, poor dad, when my dad taught me that working, it's, it's a lot of effort. It's a lot of hours and it's going to yield you X amount of dollars, right? That's what you're doing with your time. And I spent, you know, a month, month and a half working for him for basically nothing. Like you say, free, right? But then that taught me that that month and a half, if I would have put the same amount of effort somewhere else, it could have yielded me a different result. I took my mother to a concert last week to her favorite uh, artist. And I know I don't get to spend time with her every single month, but I take her to a concert and we have such a quality time where she almost cries, right? I... Take her, take her on trips, right? Every, now it's like every single birthday, she gets to pick anywhere in the world, wherever she wants to go, as long as she wants to go. Here's a credit card, actually two credit cards, just in case one gets blocked. Go enjoy it with your sisters. Go enjoy it with your friends. And it's all paid for, right? We, we're the sponsors. Um, but those things, it's like the choice that you get to decide with the time. So for example, sometimes I decide to bring my mom to a concert instead of spending every single day with my mom you know it's different it's just oh trust me i get you buddy um you know i don't like i said i don't go home often uh unfortunately but when i do i'm present you know with them and my mom only had one thing on her bucket list and this was this is when i was still working on that vessel back then and uh her her one bucket list was she wanted to go to nashville and so I, fl- I, this is actually the trip we were talking about to Peru okay. with, with the, with the uh-huh. boys. Uh-huh. So I actually flew from Peru home to Canada, met up with my mom, bought us first class uh, round trip tickets, took her to Nashville. This is when I was working for the family uh, that I did for nine years. And mm-hmm. 
her brother ran their country music label out there. Wow. So they set me up with an Escalade for the weekend. I think we were there for like four or five days. Gave me an Escalade for the whole time we were there. Got us tickets for both the original and the new, I'm going to forget the name of it, the big country venue. I'm forgetting it right now. It's horrible. Over there in Nashville? Yeah. There's the original one where they have like a little spot. The that looks like a guitar? No, no. Well, no, it's like it's an actual venue that all the country music uh, singers dream to go and sing at. The old, the old, the Grand Old Opry, I okay. think it's called. Uh, there's a new one and there's the original location. Uh, we got tickets to that, to both those. We went uh, obviously out for meals in Nashville and we went to like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and we just did a whole bunch of shit that she wanted to do and she just had so much fun. And, that's and it. it was just me and her. No one else. Just right. mom and mom and son have a good quality time trip. First class, you know, just trying to treat her like as, as great as I can. And she had so much fun. I was like, all right, mom, well, you got to put more on your, your bucket list. Right. Because I don't know where to take you. Mm -hmm. Life got a bit upside down for me for the past few years. Mm -hmm. So we haven't, you know, done trips. Plus there was COVID and all that stuff. But once this starts picking up again, um, you know, one of the prayers I have every day is, is thanking God for, sorry, one of the gratitude lists I have is thanking God for my mom's physical and mental health that she has right mm -hmm. now and for the future physical and mental health she'll have in order to come on all the talk show tours with me. Yeah. And I'm sure that created a core memory for you and your mom too. Oh, absolutely. Are you kidding yeah. me? It was so much fun. Yeah, yeah, it's great. So like you're saying, time is very important. You don't necessarily have to be around the people every single day, but when you have the time and you're able to be present and have quality time. If you have an opportunity, take it, mm. you know? So my big thing with opportunity, which I've just realized recently, is don't wait for opportunity. You have to have your eyes open looking for opportunity, which I believe whether you know you've done it or not, that's what you've done because your eyes have always been open. From what you've told me here today, you have always been looking for how you can get a bigger ROI. All the time. Yeah. Right. Instead of waiting for an opportunity to come by your way, which is what a lot of people say. I was like, oh, I never get opportunities. It's like your eyes are wide fucking open and you're looking, you're pivoting, right. you're looking constantly for the next opportunity to create more uh, success for yourself. And in, in eventually you'll be able to go to the neighborhood that your, your mom and brothers are living at and just go buy whatever fucking house you want. Right. Because you're going to have all that. You're going to have this massive real estate portfolio. You're going to have your solar company. You're going to have whatever other fucking companies you're going to go and, and, and get because it's clearly you're not done yet. You're 31. Uh, and, yeah, you won't have to worry about, you know, can right. I find a place? It just matter which one do you want to buy. I want to get to a $10 million mutual fund or type of portfolio that can at least yield me 5%. That's about $500,000 in a year, and that's about $40,000 in a month. So once I get that, I feel like with $40,000 a month, that's a comfortable li life that you can definitely have with your family. Hell and yeah. And then that's when I will be just going to probably Bali. Mm, you know, often. and Or having, having properties there you know, with family, and that's when I'm going to settle down now that there's the structure. Yeah, is there. we're gonna we're gonna have to talk about that uh, when that happens because that's that's one of my long term goals. Two years, baby. Yeah, two years. Oh fuck, I got two years. All right, I'm gonna have to amp up the podcast. Um, I want to buy property in all. Of, I think we talked about this before. Uh, Bali, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, um, Thailand, uh, and the Philippines. I want to create the life choices uh, resort and spa well, stays. Cool. So it's it's more or less kind of. I mean, no one can take my name because it's a registered trademark. So you can take the idea, but you can't take my name. So you asked me earlier, what, what's like my bigger plan? That's one of the aspects of what I want to take life choices to because it's not just a podcast. It is a podcast to use as a plat a springboard to propel me visibly into the future of creating a multitude of different companies that I think I would be very successful at building. So yeah. I I really like the concept. Yeah, I, I really wish I answered your question earlier like that because that's <laughs> what just happened. Let me know because I have a friend, one of my, my good friends uh, lives in Bali and he does real estate over there. Okay, good. So he can get you either land or mm -hmm. a builder or an actual stay that's already, you know, with the different bungalows and stuff yeah. like that. He's oh, come perfect. to me many times like, hey, you want to buy this? You want to buy that? Yeah. You buy this? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's definitely, yeah, because you need to have connections in those countries or people that know 
the the laws and the businesses and the contractors and because you got to build sometimes like from scratch mm -hmm. i'm pretty stoked about that stuff you you have a lot of shit going on yourself right i i'm assuming probably have a few other ideas in mind of like future businesses that you want to do yeah um good uh because i'm going to have you back here on the show like i said we're going to be moving into a studio in february so i'm going to want you to come on there with a couple other people that i've had on as guests before that are in your field ish mm -hmm. uh not necessarily the same area but also business owners of different aspects and uh, we're going to have some interesting conversations about cool. that sort of stuff. I want to thank you so much for coming sure by thing. today because like I say on every episode, you know, we've already well past the hour and uh, we've only talked about a couple of things. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's quite interesting. I'm so, so happy for you and I'm so proud of you because Same, where I saw you like in your early 20s and now you're in your early 30s and like sky's the fucking limit for you dude mm -hmm. i love it I same love for it. you man yeah thank you I i'm really it. happy to see all this yeah. journey that you're going yeah. through i'm just i'm just I'm, I'm happier i have more happy days than not happy days which is the whole point of me doing this mm -hmm. and uh and i'm just so grateful for anyone and everyone that's like kind of like helping me out in the in the behind the scenes type stuff so yeah let's make it happen yeah, man. absolutely cool. all right well for all of you lifers out there that uh keep swinging on by here to the life choices podcast week after week i want to thank you as always uh, i look forward to seeing everyone here next week tuesday at 2 p.m for the following episodes uh for all of roberto's uh information social medias uh the solar power company all of that is just down below here if you want to contact him possibly even get a job he'll uh he'll, maybe he'll interview you uh, all of our information is down below as well as always if you want to be a guest on here shoot me an email if you want to join us in any way or if you see any way that you can help us uh grow and build our uh podcast that'd be wonderful Otherwise, we will see you next week, Tuesday at 2 p.m. here on the Life Choices Podcast. Much love, everybody. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now about the journey. Life Choices Podcast.